In this video, the creator of Crescent Loom, along with two neuroscience professors, will demonstrate the Connectrome Explorer in Crescent Loom. Pay attention to the logic that we use to solve this circuit. You may use similar logic to solve a circuit that's given to you in class or for an assignment. Have fun exploring! Um, so this is new to Branky too. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> There's a lot of bioluminescence. Um, so this is a creature that seems to be sort of, um, you know, contracting muscles on one side of its body while relaxing on the other side of its body and then sort of going back and forth so it can move side to side. Yeah, like on one side, they all, all three of these muscles light up at once. Mm -hmm. Right, and then they alternate. So we could record from, there, it looks like there's two motor neurons, so we could record from both of them, I sure. think. We got shh and mad. Oh, shh. <laughs> so it looks like one of them um, depolarizes while the other one is hyperpolarized and they take turns, which is consistent mm -hmm. with what we see in the behavior. Yeah, so sh looks like it's the left, assuming that this is the front. <laughs> Doesn't quite it's have a front in the space. back. <laughs> yeah, so if the blue head was facing forward, its left side ish. Mm -hmm. Right. Since, yeah, if that's the brain, we can call that the front. It doesn't have a lot of uh, front and back. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess to confirm that, we could just lesion it. I don't know if we want to lesion the motor neurons. Yeah, let's try it. Sure. Um, so let's confirm that sh is that left side. So we'll lesion mad. That one's mad. Oh. Hm. Yep. So yep. motor neuron sh is still active, and it looks like the left side of the animals is still able to contract. I right. think it's actually kind of swimming better now. <laughs> <laughs> it covered a lot more distance. So maybe just to be very uh, thorough, we could lesion the other, we could lesion. Sure. Which we predict would just lead to it's contracting the right side mm -hmm. instead Seems of the good. left side. Should so, we reset the circuit first? Yeah. Reset it. And now I'm going to go and lesion. Oh, wait, I should record from both of them. And resetting means in the laboratory throwing away your experiment going and doing like a new dissection and preparation like taking like an hour right <laughs> this is the beauty of simulations you don't have to yeah do that. all right so now mad is gone and mad is just contracting its right side it was contracting just its left side before as predicted yay Okay. Great. Should we move on to the interneurons? Sure. Okay. So we'll just start by recording them. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have interneuron fit and we have interneuron I. Oh. Do we want to figure out how they're connected to each other or which one is driving which motor neuron first? Good question. I feel like the, the logical progression would be from motor neurons to which motor neurons are getting input from which interneurons, and then how do the interneurons talk to each other, if at all? Mm -hmm. So let's say we want to know who projects to sh. So we'll record from sh and the other two. Ah, well, that's pretty clear. That's pretty clear. 
<laughs> correlation <laughs> does not equal causation. Oh, good oh. point. But we should test this with a uh, stimulating. Okay, but recording. fit is definitely preceding the depolarization of shh. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, but to confirm that, we need to do another experiment. If we, um, what if we recorded from both motor neurons and stimulated one of the interneurons at a time, and then we could see whether um, what's connected to what? Okay. Okay. So we're recording shh and mad. And we're going to stimulate, if I remember, this is fit here, mm -hmm. the top cell. Uh, let's see. So we hypothesized, or we have correlational evidence that fit is exciting. Shh, and now we want to confirm that. So if I depolarize, shh, no, fit, fit. sorry. When shh is hyperpolarized, it should depolarize. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> okay. Click and hold. Do this. Stimulate continuously. <laughs> All right. But I want to wait until now. Ooh. I'm stimulating. So we've depolarized shh and silenced mad completely. Mad. So, so we didn't think, necessarily that predict that. Inhibiting mad? Directly or indirectly? Ooh. Directly or indirectly. <laughs> let's, let's table that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, but I mean, if we, if we really want to know if fit. I have an idea. Okay. <laughs> Your idea always is exploding. Oh uh, yeah, that's this. what that's what my idea was going to be. Ablate oh. everything else. <laughs> Ablate all else except for the two neurons that you're interested in, and yeah. then see, see if it still um, okay. activates. Okay. So. Oh wait. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're recording, shh, and I'm stimulating fit. Yep. And I get this tonic contraction on the left side and motor. Neuron sh is depolarized. And then I let okay. go. Yes. So yep. it's confirmed. So fit excites, interneuron fit excites motor neuron sh. Yeah. Yeah. We could uh, yes. take it one for, step one further, step further. And block excitation. Yes. Now and we have nothing. Now we have nothing. And yet, if we record Ooh. from fit and shh, it's still we see active. that the fit is still active, but motor neuron shh doesn't depolarize anymore. And if you stimulate fit now. Mm, good question. Yep. And then if we stimulate, doesn't. Yeah, no yeah. effect. No. Okay. I think this is a, we got this. This is definitely and we learned that fit is probably a peacemaker neuron. It seems like it. it. Seems like it, right? It's got no so other. Right, because there is no other mm -hmm. in interneurons projecting to it. Right. Because we killed the only other interneuron and it's still depolarizing rhythmically. Yep. Makes sense to me. Okay. Um, so before we confirm that hypothesis, I guess we should just make sure that I really projects to mad if i stimulate and hold, hold yeah i mad stays yep. depolarized and we can block excitation and confirm that that's real mm -hmm. um so let's block excitation with c and qx and now let's see i continues to oscillate rhythmically depolarized. Mad is just silent. If we stimulate I, wait for it, stimulating I now, mad doesn't respond without glutamate signaling. All right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good evidence. It's not... So just to summarize... Like Yep. Publication right. in nature to me. <laughs> just to summarize, we've got uh, fit 
which is we think is a pacemaker, excites motor neurons, which project, projects to the left side muscle. That's one side, right? Then we've mm-hmm. also got pacemaker or uh, interneuron I, which we think is a pacemaker, exciting motor neuron MAD, which excites the muscles on the right. Yeah, and there it is. Mm-hmm. But then do the pacemaker neurons talk to each other at all? Right. So how do they generate their rhythms is Mm -hmm. unknown. Right. Um, So should we confirm that our pacemaker, I mean, I think we may have already, but what if we do TTX to show, to get rid of all. Okay. Oh, good point. Yeah. We don't know for sure until we do that. Although we're pretty sure because when we deleted I, when we ablated I, it continued still, so yeah. but yeah. but we should still confirm that with ttx sure because now we can also see whether they continue to so they're oscillating mm-hmm. and they're kind of moving out of the it's it's sort of Right. But they're definitely overlapping more than they were before we added. Sure. Oh, now they're yeah, overlapping yeah. completely and they were never doing that yeah. before. So now they're not, <clears throat> you know, alternating phase anymore. Right. So that suggests at least one of them is talking to another one mm-hmm. because we blocked their ability to talk to each other and that undid their anti phase rhythm. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I wash out TTX. Sure. Oh, and it swims and again. And we're back. <laughs> well, that's, we're I mean, back. you could do that a couple of times to be like, yeah, this is really, you know, we're not quantifying this like alternating phase, right? We're not creating clear phase diagrams, but it's really consistent. Mm-hmm. Like there's never any overlap. Mm-hmm. I guess we want to know how they're con- if if they're connected and well we have believed that they are <clears throat> but how are they connected is one of them ex- is it an excitatory input or inhibitory input mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I could <clears throat> stimulate <clears throat> I seems good and <clears throat> and fit is now quiet. That's interesting that fit still like was spiking for like half a second there. Yeah, it took a while. Started. I'll try that again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's slowed though. You can it, see this. Yeah. yeah. Stimulate. Oh, oh, that time. Oh, yeah. So it's like if you stimulate it while fit is in the middle of a burst, it's like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me finish this and then I'll right. be done. Right. But then it's just done. Like it yeah. doesn't come back as long as we continue to stimulate. And yeah. if I just do a very brief stimulation, oops, let me do that here. Oh, interesting. Ooh. So it's like, yeah, you can force them to overlap for like one phase, but then it immediately switches back. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to stimulate every time interneuron fit starts to spike, then I stimulate I, and then it kind of, it also depolarizes and eventually silences fit, but not right away. Mm -hmm. It takes a bit of time. Sorry, what are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove the connection between or support the connection between I and fit. And I would say based on this, I inhibits fit, right? Because when we stimulate I and activate it, fit stops being active, even though it's a pacemaker neuron. So that means that it must be getting inhibition. Yes. Yeah, I think this like prolonged stimulation is the best. It really shows it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Suggestion, yeah. But we can um, block inhibition and see if that 
Uh, so if we put on by cuculene and mm -hmm. stimulate, we should that that should go away, right? That effect should go away. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so I just blocked inhibition. Mm -hmm. Like cuculene's in the bath. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is interesting because they're starting to overlap now. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's stimulate I and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So even though you held it, fit still comes back. Fit still comes back. Right. And before right. fit was just completely inhibited the whole time we stimulated. Right. Eye. So yeah, that can that is good, strong evidence there too. Cool. All right. Um, so I guess the question is, is this reciprocal or is it one way inhibition? So we need to stimulate fit. Well, let's reset. Let's take oh. away the yeah. yeah. All right, so we'll stimulate fit. Um, wait until it turns off. Looks like the same pattern as before. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we can do bicupulene again just to confirm that is reciprocal. So we're stimulating. And we expect it. I to continue bursting. Because it's it goes. no longer receiving inhibition from fit. Yep. So fit inhibits I also. Yes. All right. So if I, I can do a. Line. <laughs> Let me do a verbal description yeah. of uh, the circuit I've got written down. So we've got two pacemaker neurons, uh, FIT and I, which reciprocally inhibit one another. And then um, each pacemaker um, excites a motor neuron. So in this, in this example, FIT excites motor neuron SH, which excites the muscles on the left side of the nudibranch. And pacemaker I excites motor neuron MAD, which excites the muscles on the right side of the nudibranch. Mm -hmm. That's our circuit. I can put, I'll overlay it, but this is what I have, this is what I have drawn. Ta-da. Cool. Beautiful. Oh no, I wasn't recording. Just kidding. You were. I'm kidding. 